Well, I guess we can get started. Um, welcome everyone. Hope you're all having a good day. Everyone's staying safe. Thank you for joining me today. The focus of this presentation is on using GEOB 3D confinement for port and intermodal facilities. Once again, I'd like to thank you for taking your time out, your busy schedules to attend. A little about myself, <clears throat> I've been the Chief Design Engineer with Presto um, a little over the last 13 years. Prior to joining Presto, I was an engineering consultant for 20 plus years, focusing on all different types of civil and geotechnical projects. I'm an active member on the REMA committees one and five. I'm also a member of ASTM D18 soil and rock and ASTM D35 geosynthetics. We're here at the I hope you get out of today's presentation understand the benefits is using GEOA, soil stabilization for paved, unpaved surfaces, including the ability to use local, uh, low quality fill, recycled materials, and even sand, how the system reduces vertical pressures and sub-base movement, and finally, how 3D confinement can reduce pavement depths while extending, extending pavement life along with reducing maintenance by providing a more stable base. Um, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat window and we can address them at the end of the presentation. Presto worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to develop GeoCell technology in the late 70s and we continue to be the leader in innovation. We offer more than just product. We will work with you from the initial concept phase through construction to support a successful project. We have a great worldwide distribution network experience not only in GeoCell technology, but other GeoCells or other geosynthetics as well. So our assistance does not stop when a product leaves our door. We operate in four product areas using our geo GSLs, which can be used for load support. We will be talking about today, um, slope protection. You know, we, we can do um, slopes up to about 70 degrees. We can also put it in channels. Um, we have a lot of research we did in Colorado State Hydraulics Laboratory, whether it's concrete, aggregate, or topsoil infill, um, very, I guess, robust and really take a lot of shear stress and subtractive forces. And also the GEOB walls, you know, we built walls up to about 200 feet in. We also have um, aggregate and topsoil uh, porous pavements, the GEO block and the GEO pave. We also have our GeoTerra and GeoTerra GTO construction units. Let's begin discussing how GEO 3D confinement can provide benefits for unpaved and paved surfaces. So the GEO system consists of two main attributes. The first is the cell size. The cells come in three different diameters, eight and a half, 10 and a half, and 18 inches. Cell wall heights include three, four, six, eight, and 12 inches. The actual cell size and height depend on your site specific project details and site conditions. Um, we will work with you to provide a pre, uh, free evaluation, including calculations, cross section specifications for free. Uh, no matter how big that project is, we don't really have any standard design charts because no project is the same. So please reach out to us if you need an evaluation. Like I said, typically about a day, two day turnaround and those evaluations are free. The ultrasonically welded seam where all the connecting points are located is very important to the function of a GSL. The stronger the seam, the better performance of the GeoCell period. You know, strong seam allows for better lifetime performance. GeoCell is produced using 100% high quality virgin high density polyethylene for consistently strong welds at the seams, while also maintaining semi rigid ductile properties, high stress craft resistance, overall toughness, and long term durability. Geo, um, we, our GeoCell Geo cells are now using fillers or exotic polymer alloys, which can help them reduce weld strength and they're offered to competing products and mean with increase in wall stiffness. So to avoid well fares and damaging effects of differential settlement, uniformity and performance across all elements of the GSL is much more important than stiffness alone. Here you can see a typical geo panel. <clears throat> it comes tri-folded on a pallet. Each section has a nominal width, eight and a half feet. You can see the tri-folded panel right here, um, varying section lengths up to about 50 feet, depending on the cell size um, and the depth. Um, this can range from 18 feet up to about 52 feet. Typically a standard six inch, which we use a lot for our ports in a little, um, 230 fair square feet per panel. You get about 12 sections on a pallet. So it ships very effectively about 3000 square feet per pallet. So in order for a geostyle system to form uniformly, it is critical that both the factory welded seams 
in the field join junctions that are connect individual panels together um, perform at the level that's commensurate with that of the cell walls. So therefore, an inc incremental improvement in one character district, for example, if we improve, increase the well system, uh, wall stiffness, we have to um, increase the cement strength. So GEO, like I said, is manufactured using proprietary blood of high quality version HDP. Our formulation has stood the test of time for more than 40 years. Like I said, it contains no fillers, alloys, or exotic polymers. Most typical sites, GEO retain its durability for well over 150 years. Um, we add uh, carbon black to our GEO cells. You know, they're buried in the ground. Um, if it's exposed to 100% full-on UV light, the Carbon black does not start to degrade until 149 years. So you can see it's going to be around for a long, long time. We are also 100% made, made in the USA across our factories. Uh, we're part of the Reynolds um, Hefty Garbage Bay Group. So we have multiple facilities across the United States where we make all of our uh, GeoWeb and the accessories. The system components are all the supporting pieces that help Geo protect the surface and sub-base layers and also ensure relatively uniform performance of the unconnected system. So thereby protecting against the damaging effects, you know, deferation, uh, differential settlement response you know, to applied and cyclical loads. Here you can see we have equipped with a, num a numerous um, components that increase the strength and the speed of the system. Um, we have tendons. Um, this is a slope application. We run tendons through the panels, almost like hanging a set of drapes off the, off the slope. We have our after tenant clips, which transfer the load from the geo panel to the tenant and up to this um, supporting, uh, usually a pipe dead man at the, at the top of the slope. Um, we have different types of stakes to stake a, uh, a slope or channel protections project. You know, for load support applications, the after key is the major component for a completely integrated system. The after keys connect geo panels into a single system. You know, the keys um, speed installation are made out of plastic and will last a lifetime of the project. After keys ensure that the panels will not separate over time and that the geo system will not fail on anticipated cyclical loadings. The specific engineering values of the after key will ensure that the system holds up to loading over time without the corrosion seen in staples or the failure of underperforming zip ties. <clears throat> the <clears throat> purpose of cellular confinement is very simple. It's to stabilize the movement of unstable soils on both horizontally and vertically. It is an engineered system integrating multiple geosynthetics with the best method of confinement and subgrade stress reduction. So today, like I said, we're going to focus on low support applications or port and intermodal facilities. So here's the typical cross section for a low support application. We start with the sub base of varying strength, typically expressed as a, a California varying ratio, CBR. And blow counts we can use work with you on your soils report then we decide if we need a, a geotextile separation whether it's a woven uh, i should say enhanced woven or a non-woven geotextile typically our projects we're operating in you know really low stub rate cbrs you know stress levels you know cbrs maybe around two one half percent so a lot of times there's a lot of clays so we try to stay away from the, the non-woven geotextiles um the enhanced wovens now that they have you know, they provide an extra strength, but they provide also, also separation and filtration. Um, it allows water to flow freely back and forth through the subgrade and through the geo section. Um, when we talk about woven geotextiles, we're not take, talking about slip tapes. Um, slip tapes um, are pretty much banned now from use, and especially on the REMA committee, and also not recommended in the ASTO M288 spec. But, you know, we don't want to ever use the slip tape woven because we don't want that water pore pressure to build up, which ultimately fail the system. And well, sometimes you know, based, based on the design, we may have a sub base um, above the geotextile and below the geo layer. Um, this geo layer, like layer, the depth is and the type will be based on our evaluation. Once again, it can be filled with any type of local um, fill. Typically, we want to limit the fines to like 10 to 12 percent. Then we'll have a surface course, maybe typically a two inch wear surface over the top if it's an unpaved surface. And supporting the given level. So, GM3 confinement works this way. When a vertical load is applied, 
the active earth pressure in the lotus cell pushes back against the passive earth pressure in the adjacent cell to form a stable system. So basically, each cell helps support the ones around it. So the GM cell walls also transfer hoop stress, which is important in keeping the system intact and creates what we call a mattress effect. So the strength of the seams around each cell, the material stiffness of the integral strips, and the connection method between panels are all very important factors in determining how the geo system can improve site conditions. So basically, you want strong seams, you want a semi-ductor resin property, integrated connections that are critical to the performance of a geo cell system. In a load support scenario, you know, vertical de deformation will only occur with compaction or through lateral movement of the subgrade. Sub so by spreading out the load in the classic arch, uh, approach, one can reduce compaction of near surface cells, but only with cellular confinement can you ensure no lateral shifting and running with the surface. Here you can see the stresses on the subgrade with the unsupported subgrade on the left and the GUF supported subgrade here on the right. And you can notice how there is a complete elimination of the highest stresses at the surface with the GUF reinforcement. And the stresses are reduced to distribute over that wider area. Once again, that's called the mattress effect. This mattress effect basically reduces stretching, um, a drip, uh, reduces stress reaching the subgrade, and leads to a significant decrease in flexion and running. A rule of thumb for you know, reduction of stress that we can usually cut the stress level at least 50 to 60 percent um, from what is applied to what is reaching the subgrade. So a pretty significant uh, reduction in stress. You know, the second main attribute of the this, this system is the flexibility of the infill. Um, an important benefit is that even a low quality aggregate recycled material such as crushed concrete or even coarse sand can be used to fill the cells. Um, I mean, we invented this material back in the late 70s with the Army Corps of Engineers. It was actually called sand grid. So the intent of this product originally is for load support applications with the use of sand infill. We can also, and you can imagine using the recycled materials, I mean, you have to save a significant amount of money you know, if our material hauling costs. So we can also eliminate fines um, when it's desired. So the cell provide the confinement and any compaction of cohesionless soils. So without fines, you can significantly improve drainage and let the water flow freely through the system, preventing pore pressure buildup and global failure. I'll show you a couple of projects where they actually use the um, GEO system as an on-site stormwater storage to get rid of um, having to build extra stormwater ponds. So the ability to use the sands and we'll call it here, really sets GEO apart from say like Geo grids, geotextiles, you know, those products, you know, are planar, so they require a high quality crushed aggregate with higher friction angles to achieve optimum performance. I mean, with the geo, you know, we don't we like the low friction angle materials. They're just fine. We want the panels to achieve their full potential, you know, even with these things that can do a significant cross cost savings. So in the geo geo system, we want those vertical loads transferred to the cell wall as quick as possible. That's why we really get the benefit of using. Um, the low quality friction angles material you know, we can get away with the low 20s mid 20s friction angle we want to get that vertical load and get that active and path passive earth pressure engaged as fast as possible to reduce the stress on the subgrade here you can see the impressive load benefits of an 80,000 pound loaded dump truck typically your ash is 20 loading on a partially filled panel um, i took this picture up in the old stands in canada we do a lot of work on the hall roads and drill pads up there um, they all use crusher fines for the geobinfill. You can see by the picture, it's just basically sand. So that's a great benefit um, to using recycled materials. Like I said, you can see just the, just that passive bridge pressure in one cell adjacent to it supports a completely heavy H ash to H20 loading. But you realize if you've ever felt one of these panels, it, it was just HD plastic, so there's not much strength in it. Once it gets backfilled and compacted, that's when it achieves a significant amount of stress reduction and strength. So now I'll go over some geo, how, uh, geo work that the service created to stabilize, you know, for some unpaved services. You know, there's a lot of different ports now that we're doing all over the world that are going to aggregates versus a paved surface. A lot of them is pretty much due to cost. Here's a typical problem in a material handling yard. This consisted of, you know, deep ruts. Um, this slide shows, you know, running developed due to the lack of confinement and pushing and shoving of the base. Um, this project was a rush on um, this class one railroad actually this was done really close to our facility and one of, was one of the first installations that we did at a port in a motor yard and this class one bought a hundred ton motor without understanding if the existing subgrade would handle this loading and after a few 
after only a couple passes, you can see what happened. You got some significant running and shoving of that surface. So they contacted us. We worked with an engineer to come up with a, a system. And this one consisted of a non-woven geotextile um, in eight inch, eight inch deep geo panels. This was a 12 inch non-woven. So basically what they used the existing material that was on site. So all this sand, they basically pushed to the side and use it back, go back in with the, in, into the geo. And here you can see the final solution. The geo reinforced section supported low with no rutting or, defle or deflection. And as I said before, typically about a two to three inch wear surface over the top to protect the geo panels. Um, this is an intermodal yard we did for CSX um, down in South Carolina. As you can see in the picture, the 60 ton restackers were severely rutting the existing aggregate yard. Um, the running led slowing down and loading and unloading containers, but also they were um, daily basically maintaining this yard to keep it in operation. You know, the subgrade was wasn't that bad. It was a two percent CBR, but like I said, with so many fines in it over time, it just started to, to rut significantly. So we worked closely with the engineer and CSX to come up with a system to support the load and eliminate the rutting. Now, based on our review of the geotechnical report um, for the site, it was determined that the existing infill material could be reused to fill the panels. So this was a significant reduction in cost. You know, basically when you're looking at importing costs and aggregate infill, you had trucking and material costs. So the final solution here consisted of an enhanced woven uh, geotextile, strength of about 20, 100 pounds per foot with a six inch geoweb and a four inch wear surface. Once again, you can see the tri-folded panel here 230 square feet and the construction worker basically attaching the panels with after keys to the cells. Here you can see um, the panels being filled with on-site soils. So the contractor stripped off the surface material down to the top of the subgrade and then they compacted the subgrade. Um, you can hear, see here how they just basically just stockpiled, stockpiled that material in windrows along the perimeter of the project. So, and then basically just transferred it back in and used it as infill. So, like I said, it's eliminating the need to import the cost of infill. The downtime of the yard was significantly reduced, which is actually more important to the high volume of tractor carrows that this facility handles on a daily basis. And you can just see the final solution, the geo system supporting the load. The geo blair confines the fill, like it's giving it the strength and eliminates that potential for running. Once again, we had a three to four inch wear service on this project. Um, this is a project for a storage yard we did down in Mexico, on the PCS Railroad. Um, the original design actually called for reinforced concrete, but all the bids came in significantly over budget. Um, so the client began looking at different solutions. Um, we were actually reached out to to provide a value engineer solution for this project, um, one that would decrease maintenance on the site. So we worked closely with here to come up uh, with a solution you need using GEO to eliminate the concrete wear servers to support the 80 ton restackers. So this design was almost ex exactly similar to the previous one for CSSX. We put down an enhanced woven geotextile. Um, this one was a little stronger. It was 4,800 pounds per foot of strength. A six inch uh, 30D, our, our mid-size cell GEO system, and then a four inch wear surface. You can see the GEO panels being installed at crushed aggregate. You know, the fine content on this one also was limited to no greater than 15% to allow some on-site storage of stormwater and infiltration into the uh, into the subgrade. So basically, when you're infilling the geo, you, know, you just back the dump truck right up to it and dump it into large piles. Um, then either with a front-end loader or a bulldozer with the GPS, you know, the agar can be pushed into the empty cells while the equipment drives on the filled areas. You know, it's very fast efficient process. It doesn't take any additional training or expertise on behalf of the contractors. Ruling th rule of thumb, approximately 3,000 plus square feet per hour can be installed um, with a group of three. So typically it's two, two people staging or attaching the panels together, one person staging the material. And here you can see the final wear service being finished to provide you know, the solid source to support the load. Um, very minimal maintenance after placement of the with wear service here, the owner actually put down an asphalt tack coat. Basically, this is a surface stabilizer to control dust and provide a little bit of extra strength. 
Uh, this was an interesting project as you have solved two issues. And this was a two acre expansion site in Pennsylvania where the owner wanted to increase the size of the facility. Um, but the local municipality would charge the stormwater. Um, there was not enough room to provide a paved surface due to a lack of you know, lack of area for that stormwater pond. So they actually, through our distribution network, um, reached out to us and we put together an evaluation. So the first issue was to provide a durable driving surface you know, over a core subgrade you know, for the parking storage areas. Um, existing service would rut required maintenance. So we want to make sure we could eliminate that. So it had to support heavy asteroids 20 loadings along with heavy uh, real gantry, gantry crane loads. So through design, we had a six inch geo, a very heavy weight and unwoven geotextile, 12 ounce geotextile, and a three inch wear surface. The second issue was to provide on-site stormwater storage to allow the facility to reduce the volume of water reaching the stormwater ponds. As I mentioned, since the, uh, the only way they were allowed to expand was to have a, a, a surface that would allow storage on site where they could get the credit because they didn't have the room to expand their, uh, their stormwater ponds. So since you do not need fines to achieve compaction you know, with the geo, the system will act as a, pretty much an on-site stormwater storage. Okay, so storing water in the void space of the infill as a rule of thumb, a three quarter inch crushed aggregate has a void space of approximately 30, 35%. So you can imagine how much water you can store um, to reduce the, the runoff and ultimately the ability to reduce stormwater pond construction. So since we're allowed to store water in the parking area, the stormwater ponds don't have to be increased. Here you can see a close picture of the open graded material that was used for infill. You can see there are no fines in the infill. That geo provided confinement and lockup of this material. It can never be used for conventional unpaved area because it doesn't have fines for lockup. So GEO provides that cellular 3D confinement to allow the use of open graded aggregates. One point on GEO compaction, um, there is no need to really, you know, I guess hammer the infill with vibra uh, vibration to achieve it to compact. Typically, vibration is off or kept very low and the weight of the compactor is more than enough to provide adequate compaction. If the contractor really tries to hammer it, you could actually raise the geo panels up out of the uh, out of the system. So you want to make sure it's just roller compacted with very very light light vibration if required. Here's the interesting one. This was installed in 2001. You see this is that picture. You see the picture of the site in 2001 and 2011. Um, you know, no rutting has occurred. Um, Stop back at this site um, right before COVID hit, and there's still no rutting. So this site has been, has been installed for over 20 years. Um, basically only requires maintenance here and there uh, just to uh, make sure the two or the three inch wear surface is covered over the top of the geo panels. We do port and intermodal work all over the world. Um, this is a geo system project we did for phase three um, at the port of Inver Gordon in the UK. Um, this project was an expansion of about six acres, but consisted of two areas. One area was uh, three and a half acres and used a four inch deep geo paddle. And the second area was two and a half acres and used six inch geo paddles. So the two areas were subject to different loading conditions. And during the design phase, you know, we worked with the consultant to determine the most appropriate paddle depth to meet site conditions and provide a cost effective, uh, cost effective solution. The four inch area was used, you know, typically only in the vehicle parking area. So that was about three and a half acres. And then the heavy gantry crane ways, um, those used the six inch uh, geo panels. Once again, we did use a, uh, this was also a non woven geotextile separation there. So there is big, once again, just unbound pavement with crushed gravel surface. So it really did provide the perfect solution to minimize the overall cross section depth. So this unique load transfer mechanism by controlling differential settlement in the heavy loaded area. You know, differential settlement was a really big concern on this project too, because there's a lot of variable subgrade strengths throughout this um, site, especially the two and a half acres that were used for the, uh, the gantry crimeways. So we worked the engineer to develop the cost cross section that work to bridge those little subgrade CB areas um, using, utilizing the geotextile and the geo. <clears throat> so one of the most cost effective methods to reduce long-term consolidation and differential sediment due to sickle loadings on a soft grade is to increase the stiffness of the overlying layer. So, you know, under cyclical loadings, geo prevents the lateral movement of the infill material, which dramatically increases the shear resistance. So, in effect, you know, geo obtains more like a three dimensional structure or like a semi rigid slab. So, the high shear strength 
and a greater load distribution reduces that vertical stress reaching the subgrade. So the end result will be a more dur durable subgrade that will increase pavement life by preventing long-term settlement and consolidation. <clears throat> so I said previously, type of compaction is very important. Just make sure you monitor it. You know, when, when the guy, when the contractor is not really hammering the vibration. You can see him here just preparing. Um, you can see the top of the geo panels here. He's just going over it to provide about a two inch, two to three inch wear surface. And here you can find, see the final surface after compaction. So like I said, this is about a six acre site. Four inch and six inch deep panels were used. Um, this one we installed about five years ago. They've only maintained it. Um, surface spreading only one time since then. Here's a project we did on Peru. Um, it was a large project with 15 acres of six inch geo for base and surface stabilization. Um, this is the port of Kaleo. It's Peru's main, um, Peru's main seaport and is located about 12 kilometers from, uh, from Lima. So the main reason the owner selected geo was the ability to use local sand infills. Um, as stated previously, you know, we can use that low quality aggregates, recycled material, or even a coarse sand for infill. So the majority of our port projects um, typically use sand infill. So it's typically so readily available and at a much uh, lower cost or even, you know, even on site. So you can see on the slide, the contractor stockpiled the on site sand to be used in the geo panels. There are many different ways in different installation tricks when installing the panels. Um, this contractor wanted to make sure that the first set of panels were installed square. So we built some stretcher frames. Um, just added some infill. Um, the spreader frames are just constructed of two by fours and some number four rebar is added to keep the corners open. Um, either one of us from Presto or one of our, our represent uh, distributors um, will be on site assisting the installation techniques with the contractors. Um, we also typically, uh, depending on the size of the project, a lot of times we'll have a pre-installation meeting and whether that's through Teams or go to webinar, just going over the you know, the materials that contractors should have readily available when we get on site, we're all ready to go. We also have on our website, um, lots of reference data, installation videos, um, installation support manuals that, that also help with installation. Once again, typically we just stake the corners, but like you see this, this guy wanted a really good precise installation. So after the, you know, basically the fill is put in the panels, just remove the stretcher frame. So I'll show you a couple of different ones later in the presentation. But it's always good to make sure that those first couple panels are installed square. It's like hanging drywall. If you, if you hang them differently to start and you're not square, you'll have a little bit of issue as you keep going down the thing as far as stretching it out. So it doesn't matter how small the project is in size. You know, we always provide the same amount of technical support in our evaluations, including cross sections, calc specs, written summary. Here's a project that we did for a very small project um, for some gantry printing ways that are being used to unload trailers from rail cars. Um, you can see the significant amount of rutting due to the crane tires and the interesting me methods that are used to stop the rutting. And they tried metal panels, timber mats, um, all kinds of different things with no luck. We do a lot of work with the class ones. Um, this class one that operates this track that told the owner to reach out to us and give us a call so we could fix. This was about a 500 500, 600 foot long stretch along each side of the tracks where the gantry crane ways were. Where actually you can see the significant running and they tried all these uh, tips to fix it and that didn't work so they gave us a call. So we were the, the, uh, the engineer and the contractor and the class one. It used about 30 panels of geo on each side of the track. And we, like I said, we still provided a full detailed evaluation um, so that the owner and Contractor and engineer understood the solution and our benefits. So here the solution consisted of a um, heavyweight non-woven geotextile, about I think this was a 10 ounce geotextile here. And then we use 8 inch geo filled with local crushed sandy, sandy material that they had on, on site. It was basically a, a ballast rock. So as I mentioned many times, we provide free evaluations for all of our projects, no matter the size. And the evaluation will include, like I said, the written summary, cross sections, calcs, specs. Typical turnaround time is about two days. Um, we will provide full details on the calculation and how we got to that recommendation through our evaluation. We'll detail um, our calculation methods so you uh, know, know exactly the benefits of GEO. 
So now we'll discuss how GO3 is, is beneficial under hard pavements, including asphalt, reinforced concrete, and lower crop, uh, compacted concrete, especially in areas with soft subgrades and drainage issues. We can all relate to this slide and recognize the problem. You know, an unstable base under hard pavements over time will lead to rutting, settlement, potholes, uh, pavement degradation, and even total failure. So common contributing factors include you know, differential sediment, localized sediment, soft subgrades, as well as poor drainage that can lead to excessive pore pressure buildup beneath the pavement section and ultimately failure. So reducing the damaging effects of differential settlement and protecting against buildup of excess pore pressure is a key factor in extending pavement life and reducing long-term maintenance costs. This project was for Union Pacific Railroad in San Francisco. That's an auto storage yard. The cars being uploaded from Korea. So the original design actually included um, geogrids with a high quality aggregate fill. Um, when construction started, um, you can see the poor the subgrade was, you know, very low strength, high moisture content. This is right next to the San Francisco Bay. So, you know, during high tides, um, which would of course during the time of construction during the day, um, this thing became a water bath. So um, we do a lot of value engineers for certain contractors. This contractor contacted us and we worked with them to provide a geo solution um, in place of the geo grids. So here you can see we work closely. The solution consisted of a, a high strength um, woven geotextile, 50 or 40, 100 pounds per foot of strength, um, plus four to six inch base, depending on where it was in the facility. And then there was four inches of a six inch geo whip filled with local sandy aggregate. And then they were placed with four inches of asphalt over the top. Here you can see the extended geo panels and the open grade infill being placed into the panels. Just a closer view of the infill procedure. Once again, you know, the agar is just jump, uh, just dumped from a truck and pushed into the cells by a bulldozer, even you know, front loader in this case. So once the cells are filled, you can immediately drive on it, even without compaction. The geo panels install quickly, so installation of the panels is usually way ahead of the actual infill placement. And like I said, having the geo it doesn't reduce or doesn't uh, increase the amount of installation time when you're spreading that aggregate. You can see the placement of the four inches of asphalt over top of the geo. And there's a two inch wear surface over top of the geo panels. Regular asphalt pavement was used. It was compacted with a smooth barrel roller. Um, no, no special equipment or procedures are required with paving over the geo panels. So a paving crew could install, you know, typically at their regular speed without needing uh, any existing training or additional equipment of any kind. <clears throat> this is another auto storage yard. Um, this was for BNSF, uh, actually located right next to uh, Seattle International Airport. It was a 25 acre site uh, with subgrade strengths ranging from about 1 to 3% CBR. The original design consisted of a two layer biosteel geogrid system, but after bidding, the cost came in higher than budget was allowed. So the engineer contacted us through a VE solution. Um, so it was determined you know, through looking at that through the sales report that we could actually use the existing material on site and you could just mix it with uh, like a 50-50 crushed aggregate blend and the existing on site material. So you can imagine that saving a significant amount of material cost, but also sped up construction time quite a bit. So staging is very important for any large projects, especially. So we have a significant amount of installation experience and we'll be on site to support the contract for tips for quick, uh, quick and efficient installation methods. Um, here you can see the use of staging tables, you know, where adjacent panels can be connected. Um, each panel has an area of about 230 square feet. And this contractor is using the staging tables to connect three panels together. You're basically getting about 700 square feet. Um, and you're connecting with the after keys and you haul it over. It basically allows the workers to be upright versus bending over trying to connect the after keys on the long side of the geo panel. And then you just haul it over to the site. So here's three sections. So eight and a half, 17, almost 24 feet in width, 27 feet in length. You connect panel to panel and band. So like I said, about at least 3,000 square feet hour with the crew of three. So like I said, it goes down pretty fast. So this contractor wanted very square panels for the entire installation for all 25 acres. So they actually survey staked the corners of each geo panel. And once the geo panels were filled, they just pulled the straight uh, Pull the stakes and went on. So here you can see this is one panel of geo, eight and a half feet wide, 27 feet long. 
you just pull the panel over in the corners, infill it. Once the infill is, is in there, they just pull, pull the stakes to allow for spreading and compaction. You can pick a picture of the site, the installation ongoing with the uh, wear, sur wear surface. Um, you can see where the contractor, here you can see on the side where they stockpiled the soil for mixing, for putting back into the geo panel. Once again, you just back up to it with the dump truck, dump the infill material. On this one, they used a bulldozer with a GPS system on top to spread the infill material. Like I said, this site was uh, 25 acres. <clears throat> And the finished surface. Oh. So, like I said, it's 25 acres of vehicle storage from Korea. Um, this project is a port in Latin America. It serves as a basically a coal and container storage area. The project consists of an access road and a storage area. The subgrade had very low CBR, and the owner contacted access for help because they were getting so much maintenance and so much running. So we provided a system. We were close to let the engineer to provide a complete solution. Uh, solution. Once again, this one used a uh, Enhanced woven geotextile, um, six inch geo panels with a two inch wear surface over the top of it. And then actually six inches of asphalt were put down. Um, working with the engineer on this one, so since the geo panel can reduce so much stress reaching the subgrade, uh, we're all, all, also able to reduce emission pavement depth from eight down to six inches, which provided a 25% reduction in cost and cross section depth. So that was a significant, substantial savings to the owner. <clears throat> Once again, after placement, you can see ready for compaction. And once again, you don't want to really hit with a vibration. I'm um, just lightly roll it with smooth drum rollers. If not, here's the final surface where the asphalt layer is placed. You can see wrist insulation to compact materials at the top of the panels, which is completely acceptable. Um, they wanted to keep it within existing cross section. So they just filled it right up to the top, compacted it flush, and then put down the six inch asphalt layer. Typically, like I said, we're usually having a one or two inch worth of surface over the top. Here's just the final axis of the port showing the six cell last surface. But a big thing on this one is we could significantly reduce the asphalt thickness by 25%, but also using the on site material, save them a significant amount of money <clears throat> and time of construction. This was a really cool project we did. Um, this was for the port of Panama City down in Florida. Um, we were doing some work on the rail spur line there. Um, and during excavation, we were on site the contractor pounding a, uh, pounding a large area of petroleum contaminated soil. Um, the port actually got this um, land from the military. So they didn't really know what was on it. So they, when they ran into this into construction, there was a couple different options. You could either remove it um, off site and dispose of it, but you know, that would have been significant costs. Um, or we could leave it on site and the government worked with us. Over here, we just stockpiled it on site and we would work it every every couple of days just to vent off some of the hydrocarbons. And we actually used it for infill through the site. So you can see all this is just local, local fill. And here you can see the contaminated. There's quite a bit of contaminated soil <clears throat> on this site. And they just used it for backfill in the late on yard. This one is just showing, once again, we had enhanced open geotextile down and the six inch geo panels. So if it's a, a flexible surface, such as an asphalt, then we will provide once again a free set of calculations for you. Um, we were using geo under payments. We actually use the Astro design method to, to, to de develop the geo cross section. Um, depending on <clears throat> the type of loadings, you know, we'll use equivalency factors <clears throat> to adjust the wheel loadings. So we'll give you a full set of calculations um, for your review. This project was designed to build and model for uh, Florida East Coast Railroad. So in the overhead photo, you can see where the concrete, pretty hard to see, but these are concrete gantry cranways. So the geo was placed on, on this whole facility. You can actually see in this photo where the geo is going down. That's going to be under the uh, <clears throat> under the gantry cranes. The gantry cranes were constructed with um, roller compacted concrete, RCC. So the original ground improvement strategy called for like six months of surcharge over most of the site to excel accelerate primary consolidation and protect against excessive settlement. Um, not surprising, the long timeline to implement a preloading strategy was deemed pretty much unacceptable to project owner uh, since it was a design build. Person was asked to be part of the team to come up with cost savings for base stabilization and long-term settlement. Uh, we worked closely with the engineer 
the geotechnical consultant and contractor come up across that to serve a couple a couple of functions. The first was the ability to use sand infill. Um, this existing site had to be built up to get it on the floodplain. Um, so it was built up using uh, anywhere from 24 to 40 inches of sand. So, so the ability to use the sand infill saved a significant amount of money in construction time. And the second function was the ability of the GF system to control short and long-term differential settlement with 10 pavement line. So basically we were brought in, we knew the site was going to going to settle just due to the weight of the fill. We can't eliminate that, of course. Um, but through the design process um, with the geotech, with reducing the stress that reached, reached the subgrade, um, we were able to significantly reduce the long-term settlement and also control differential settlement. This project has been in place for about eight years now. Um, it has settled a little over an inch. It was expected to settle a couple inches in that time. But the good thing about it is settled uniformly. So there's been no differential settlement. And through the design process, we were also able to reduce the amount of um, RCC thickness for the roller compacted concrete systems. So here, once again, we had a high strength woven geotextile with a 4,800 pounds per foot strength, six inch uh, geo filled with the um, local sands with a two inch cover. So basically that system, you know, controlled differential sediment, bridged areas of soft sub grills or sub um, soils, reduced consolidation zone by significantly reducing the stretch in the subgrade. Also want to mention that, like I said, that make sure when we're talking about woven geotextiles, that it's not a split table for, all your, for any type of project. And here you can see this is sand infill being placed in cells. In this instance, the sand being, you know, basically spread out into the panels. This was all existing local sand. So they have to bring any costly aggregate from either up north or from Mexico. So once again, they put down, um, Roller compacted concrete or RCC over the top of the GOM um, for the gantry crane ways. Um, if you ever seen it, it's basically a, a low slung high PSI concrete with no reinforcement. Typical goes down to inches or lifts for, um, ranging up to about 12 inches. Um, by using the GOM system and working with the engineer, the depth of the RC, RCC pavement was reduced from 24 inches to 18 inches. Um, so it basically cut the RCC thickness down by 25%. It only required two lifts, you know, versus potentially three. Once, once you can save a lot of construction cost and time savings. And here you can see the red air placement, the rollers are on it. So you have a very durable surface. Important note that this port has been a cervix set for quite a number of years, and the settlement has been very uniform and within the limits anticipated in the design process. This is a project we did in the car uh, a couple of years ago during the pandemic. Port had a seven acres for DP World. Um, this port had a seven acre area that needed upgrades to enable operation of the gantry cranes. Um, terminal needed base layer and surface stabilization, strong considerations for project costs and timing. So we worked with them and their local rep our local representatives to come up with a system. The original plan was to provide site surcharging for eight months. We also used on here um, a recycled on-site material for infill, which eliminated the need to clear chemical stabilize the soil. Um, and have a pretty significant base depth um, for this project. So this was a design build, we like said during during the COVID shutdown, so the contractor was able to use Presto, you know, our online webcasts, our videos, our installation guides. We also connected with them, you know, via Teams, so they ha uh, had all the information they needed for a very successful installation. Um, once again, our YouTube channel has hundreds and hundreds of videos showing proper installation techniques. And of course, we typically have a representative on the site to assist with the installation support. This project, um, they used a non-woven geotextile, uh, about a four inch base of existing material that was there, more of a cliche, and then the existing on-site sands here, as you can see. This is a um, system actually were used was, uh, had three inch painting blocks on it. They were installed as wear surface over the geo. The system is pouring great. I mean, the first two and a half acres of the container yard was installed just before the rainy season. It has been in use for a couple of years now, but they had no settlement or no maintenance needed, even with the exceptionally heavy rain and flooding that occurred during the time. So for any hard surface pavement, um, I think we'll provide full design, evaluations, cross sections, calculations, specifications for concrete, 
we'll go back to concrete and paved surface. You know, like so we use the Ashton method for reinforced concrete surface for roller compacted concrete projects. We use the uh, guide for roller compacted concrete pavements from the National Concrete Pavement Technology Center. Um, that is what's shown on this one. This is the RCC method, where it's all based on stress reduction, reaching a, reaching a system. And then for use, whenever we use pavers, we use the British Force method, or sometimes even the PKs software. So in summary for ports intermodal, um, GMB can be added to port intermodal project provide a more stable and longer lasting surface for unpaved areas, which reduce maintenance and repairs, or paved surfaces, including asphalt, roller compacted concrete, and concrete, GM decreases pressure on subgrade to reduce differential and long-term settlement, which will extend pavement life and reduce maintenance and maintenance costs. So the ability to use a low-quality aggregate, and recycled materials, or even a coarse sand can significantly um, save on uh, a lot of money and time. So also the ability to reduce the stress on the subgrade and potentially reduce the final pavement thickness, leading to project cost savings. So once again, we'll provide three designs for all of our projects for a complete solution. The solution will include not only the geo base of the thickness and the size, but also the type of geotextile, um, the, the, the strength, the depth of the subbase, if required, um, thickness of the wear surface, pavement layer, and or subbase. <clears throat> I got some time, so I'd just like to spend a little bit of time talking about slopes. And we do a lot of slope protection next to intermodal, um, and port yards, so we just talk about GF for slopes. So GF for slope protection is a very flexible solution used on different types of infill depending on, on the project needs. And we can fill it with topsoil, we use a vegetated surface. A lot of our real embankments, we do utilize aggregate infill to reduce the need for cutting and keeping you know, animals or anything else off the slope. We also use concrete on projects where no maintenance is there or areas subjected to heavy rains and very high tractive forces. So on this slope project up in Montana, egg rink was chosen for the nearly 200 square, 200,000 square feet on both sides of the embankment. It was basically wanted something for erosion control with a low maintenance, low cover. So as you can see here, the, the um, contractor, they're just installing it from the top of the slope down, connecting the panels with the atric keys. Once again, stage construction, so you're um, connecting multiple panels together at the top of the crest, and you just pull it down, pull it down the slope. Here you can see the workers installing the, here they use stake acres. Um, we did a design, so we told them the number of acres and the depth, the length of them. And they use it to speed up insulation, to save a lot of back strain. So this uses like a Hilti or any kind of pneumatic hammer, and they drive the anchors into the slope to provide compaction. Here you see just a close up picture showing the geo panels, you know, we're extended underneath the bridge abutment. And on, onto the underneath the bridge abutment here, and then onto the other side of the embankment. And then basically, just to finish up close picture, uh, finished slope a couple of years later. This project was for a new siding near our out for Union Pacific out by El Paso, Texas. It was about 450 approximately square feet of four inch geo. Um, this was filled with a crushed aggregate. The area does not get a lot of rain when it does, so it's really typically in short and large bursts. So you could be getting some issues with erosion on these sidings. So they want to make sure that they want to eliminate the need for any maintenance. So it came to us, we did design using four inch um, geoweb with a, basically a one inch crushed aggregate. Here you can see the panels prior to infill placement. You know, you can see large riprap. Here it was placed at the bottom going to the culverts because this area was huge as far as a drainage way. So they want to make sure there wasn't any erosion at the toe of the geo panels and put down some large aggregate or riprap. Once again, you can see the large zip wrap uh, next to the very big culvert underneath that rail. So this was a really big uh, base that they were trying to run the water through. So one inch geo with a one inch rock in the fill. Here's the intermodal project we did for Union Pacific. Once again, this was down in Laredo, Texas. We used about three quarters of a million square feet of geo. Um, the original design here included a six inch reinforced concrete channel. So here, they required six inches of reinforced concrete. And on the two to one side slopes, um, they were gonna use four inch grout bags here. So six inch reinforced concrete in the channel, um, four inch grout bags going down the two to one slope. It came in um, really over budget. So the accessible contractor 
um, approached us for a valued engineer solution um, using geofill and concrete. What we did on this one is we used a, a 3S geob filled with concrete on the slopes and a 4-inch geob filled with concrete in the channel. We went a little deeper concrete here because they would have to get in here and maintain these with vehicles. So through our design, we, uh, we needed a 4-inch uh, filled geob concrete um, in, this ch in the channel portion of it. You know, the big thing on this one, it saves them a ton of money, um, but the biggest thing is it, could be, it saves, them a, saves them a lot more time in this yard and able to get into installation or start up a lot quicker. Because, you know, with geo filled with concrete, the geo is the form and it is the reinforcement. So there's no rebar needed. Um, you just basically fill it up to the top of the geo panel and screen it flush to the top of the panel. Here you can see as they went along and they stopped, you know, they just come up to a hard, hard stop every day, and the next day they just come and start putting it again. This slide, this slide just shows how far the geo protection extended. You know, basically you can see here's this four inch geo where it got poured in the concrete channel and the three inch on this two to one side slope. And you can see how expansive that area is going basically around this whole yard down in Laredo, Texas. We did put some, you know, there was some areas here that um, had some water. So we just put in some standard weep holes, you know, used to use the pipe in some non-woven geotextile and just created a lot of poor pressure to not get built up. So one of the biggest questions we get is about cost. You know, really no surprise there. Um, especially if this is like a new technology, you haven't used GEOB in the, in the past. We here we have basic comparison for the GEOB system for mold support application. In this case, it's a gravel aggregate surface. You know, comparison shows the difference in mold price and cross-section depth for the aggregate only on read four section using geogrids and geotextiles. And two, two sections showing the use of GEOB, you know, one with the aggregate. And one with salvaged on-site materials and seam fill. So you can see how the GEOB system is both thinner and less expensive than our methods. You know, I, I always tell people that we really operate, um, if it's just low support applications, we really excel in the low sub rates, you know, less than three um, when we're compared to say a GEOGRID or just a geotextile by itself. Um, in the low sub rates, CBRs, you know, less than three, we're always going to be able to cut that cross-section significantly compared to a geogrid or just a geotextile um, using GEOA. So we do a lot of projects where the engineer will just call us and then say, hey, I'm looking at uh, this road and I want a, like a low subgrade CBR. What do you think the approximate cost estimate is? And we work with our local distribution network and get them uh, uh, some cost comparisons because they also sell geogrids so, and geotextiles. So we can do a side-by-side -side cost comparison so the engineer knows you know, before he starts in-depth design, what approximately the cost per square foot is going to be for that system. <clears throat> we have a very detailed website. Um, it's at prestogeo.com. You know, many tools available for your projects. And we have real quick links for information from design through construction. And there's actually a learning section right here. You know, we have hundreds and hundreds of webinars on site and, you know, case studies and pictures. Um, here is, here's the joke. Well, first of all, let me see. Here's our YouTube link. This is where you can click um, to go to all the videos. The learning is, like I said, is where all our uh, recorded webinars are located. And then you can also, we have something called Spec Maker. So you can, with about four clicks of a button, you can create a complete CSI spec. And once here, if you click to get a free project evaluation, that brings you to another page. This form pops up. Um, you just fill it out to your best ability. There's going to be probably some questions you don't know. If you don't know, just skip it. You know, and if it's important for that design, and what, what we'll do is we will contact you, and uh, we'll contact you to try to fill in any of the blanks of the, um, of the information that we made to, to do a free design. And like I said, depending on the complexity, um, you know, slope channel projects are really usually pretty straightforward walls too. We can usually turn those around in a day, two days um, for really challenging load supports, you know, like a port and a motor where you're looking at different types of vehicles, you know, gantry cranes, reach stackers, you know, uh, containers and things like that, heavy, heavy loadings, maybe some low subgrade CBRs. That might take us two to three days, but like I said, we'll get a hold of you right away and, and uh, 
and walk you through that. So with that, I want to thank you for taking time on your busy schedules today to join us. So my contact information is uh, listed here. If any questions come up later, you know, you can just reach out. Um, and I said, if we don't have enough information for a full evaluation, just, you know, just reach out to me, give me a call, send me an email. Um, we can set up a time to talk about it. You know, we know that GeoV is not a solution for all projects. We have the best distributors around the globe and we can make sure that you have the appropriate product to meet your project cost schedules and challenges. So once again, I want to thank you for taking your time out today. And let me see if we got any questions. Infill, um, there's a question on any limits for the infill as far as sand and fines content. Um, yes, you typically want to limit the fines content to less than say 12 to 15%. Um, you know, anything more than that, you know, we might have a little bit of problems with lockup, especially if it's a, a non-paved surface. Um, if it's a paved surface, you know, we can go a little higher in the fines content. That basically is going to get paved over anyway. So once it's compacted in place, it's fine. But if it's going to be an unbound pavement, aggregate wear surface, and yeah, we want to keep that to a max of 15%. 12% is more likely though. Question on slope protection. Um, yeah, I mean, the good thing about our slope protection and channels is that We've done, we spent a lot of money on research and testing at the Colorado State Hydraulics Research Lab under the direction of Chris Thornton. Um, pretty much any geosynthetic product that's used for open erosion control is tested at this facility. And you know, we have case studies for uh, topsoil filled GeoWeb, and we have it for aggregate filled GeoWeb, and also for concrete. And if you're looking for an aggregate, sur aggregate surface, we have a uh, design method based off of that testing where we can reduce the size of riprap up to about 10 times um, in that design calculation and design method will give you the, the size of the geo web and the size of the infill so we've got a lot of research and testing that we can go back to uh, before that someone's acting on the maximum slope angle um, typically our slopes are 50 degrees and below um, you know you want to make sure that slope is globally stable um, you know, we'll do walls where the slope are not globally stable um, so we can do reinforce or gravity walls. Um, we have done walls up to 70 degrees. Um, a lot of Mountain California, where they would actually take a topsoil, a 50% topsoil, a 50% clay, and mix it together, and actually pack it into the cells. Um, so that can uh, that can go pretty steep. And then we just on those ones, what we would do um, there, where we would uh, cover it with a core fabric. Would you be used as retaining wall system, let's say, for 1.2 meters? Yes, yes. So we have a, a program called GeoB MSC. It's a free design program to design um, gravity reinforced walls and slopes. Um, very easy to use program. Uh, typically, you can design a system, you know, wall in you know, a half hour if you have all of your little geotechnical information. Like I said, that that is free. Um, if you want, you can just reach out to me, and uh, I'd be more than happy to get you that program. So typically for the smaller walls like that, 1.2 meters, they're just under five feet. You, rule of thumb is anything over about um, over about 10 feet is a gravity wall. And that depends on the surcharge you have in the system. Um, you know, if it's a heavy surcharge, like a lot of times we'll do um, bridge abutments next to a rail. So then you've got some pretty high and heavy slopes. Let's see anything else. What is the price per square foot? Um, like I said, that's all based on the um, that's all based on the uh, depth of the panel. You know, whether it's a three, four, six, or eight inch, um, it's based on the type of geotextile that's actually below it. Um, so it all depends on that. So like I said, that's the biggest thing is is get with us and we can do a very quick analysis and uh, and get you a price per square foot um, working with the uh, with our distributors. Better question is any use of geo under track stabilized the ballast? Uh, yes, we have miles and miles and miles and miles of uh, geo supported ballast all over the world. We work with all the class ones, all the short lines. You know, we 
work in Australia, um, in in UK. Actually, we just recently um, put together a new design uh, system. We did some research studies with Network Rail over in the UK, and they are using Geo under Rails uh, under soft subgrades. Some on the difference in the VE between the uh, geogrid projects and the non ones. Um, that was that was interesting because it was so it was so bad the subgrid was so bad they couldn't actually get it to work with two layers of geogrid. That was just the problem. Um, so when we controlled it when we put it in, we tried to get it out of the high high uh, high areas, um, and then just used the geotextile four to six inch base underneath it and then six inch geo with the asphalt on top of it. I'm trying to get my systems now. Watch me still pangle. Any software available for the consultants? We don't have any software for load support. Um, because we'd like to do all the projects ourselves. Um, <clears throat> we don't have any standard design manuals because every project is different. So we want to make sure that we um, <clears throat> want to uh, make the right application the right size. What type of infill that bigger is needed for many vo voids over time, especially in Florida, not, not lime rock? Um, you know, a lot of times we'll use the three quarter to a one inch crust. You know, there's really no limitation on on the size of the material inside. You know, I guess like I said, a three quarter inch crust has a void space of about 35 percent. So if you're looking at it for storage, um, that's a pretty good pretty good gradation to use. Um, what design method was used to justify the 25 inch RCC reduction? Um, that we use the uh, British uh, British Porce method to do that. This, this webinar, someone are asking to share slides. This will be up on our website um, to it, and we also will get you your uh, your PDH credits. So you don't have to worry about that. Two speed application rail, crane rail, and ballast system. Absolutely. You know, we, do, we operate in all of the all the railways. Like I said, we uh, do a lot on the rail. We're a big part of the Lima. We're in the Lima manual here in the United States. We've been in it for our near, almost 30 years. So. The geogrids, the enhanced mobile geotextiles are in the ring of many also. You won't see the slip tapes in there, but you will see the, <clears throat> the other ones. All right, well, that takes care of all the questions. So once again, here's my contact information. Just reach out to me by email or give me a call. Um, now, once again, thank you for joining us today.